Some people at the moment, especially those living on their own, are still feeling cut off from their families, with still only limited contact allowed. Others living in a family are perhaps feeling the opposite, as they see rather more of their family than they're used to or perhaps comfortable with. Jesus grew up in a family with Mary and Joseph and Jesus' brothers and sisters. So he knows firsthand what it's like. And at times there were tensions. And even when Jesus was 30 years old and had left home, uh, those tensions sometimes surfaced. Our passage today is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 3. I want to read verses 20 to 21 and then verses 31 to 34. Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered and he and his disciples were, were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he's out of his mind. Then jumping on to verse 31. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting round him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked around at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. It's not uh, quite clear here why the family of Jesus is trying to take charge of him. It could be that they feel he's starting up some revolutionary movement and they're fearful for his safety. Or perhaps it's simply that they're worried that he's not looking after himself physically. With all the crowds constantly around him, he and his disciples don't seem to be eating enough. So his family have concerns about him. It's interesting that Mark, when he records his gospel, doesn't gloss over this. He doesn't paint a, a sickly sweet picture of Jesus as a, a universally accepted hero. He simply tells it as it is. Some people didn't understand Jesus and for a time that included his family. And passages like this for me actually increase the sense of authenticity of the gospel accounts. You know, Mark records what he's learned from eyewitnesses. John's Gospel even at one point says that his brothers did not believe in him. But as we read on in the Bible, we do discover that one of Jesus' brothers, James, did go on to be one of the, the key leaders of the Christian church. So we don't need to take from our passage today that Jesus was permanently rejected by his family. But what lessons do we take away from this section? Well, maybe one is to be reminded that as Jesus was misunderstood by people, including his family, who didn't at that stage have the full picture of who he was, that Jesus is still misunderstood today, perhaps by those who've only looked at a bit of evidence about him, or perhaps just listening to second-hand opinions. Sadly, many people who reject Jesus' love and his call on their life haven't even read any of the Gospel accounts and got a clear picture of him. Well, if that's you, why not read one of the Gospels for yourself? Perhaps start with Luke's Gospel, as most of our daily reflections in the next few weeks are going to be based on Luke's Gospel. And it's worth noting how Jesus reacts when he, he is told by his family, he's told, sorry, he's told that his family are calling for him. He remains calm. He also points to the fact that his followers have the amazing privilege of being part of a different family. God's family. Jesus says, whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. I don't believe here that Jesus is being dismissive of his blood family. A bit later, in chapter 7, Mark's Gospel tells us how 
Jesus has really strong words for the Pharisees because they have rules which allowed people to, to dedicate themselves to God and ignore their responsibility to their parents. He condemns the Pharisees for undermining the fifth commandment, honour your father and mother. Jesus clearly has very high views uh, on family responsibilities. We also read in Luke's Gospel that as a child, Jesus was obedient to his parents. And John's Gospel records that even when Jesus was dying on the cross, he showed great love and concern for his, for his mother when he asked John to look after her. Human families are very important. And in most cases, being a follower of Jesus Christ actually strengthens our family relationships as we reflect God's love, mercy and patience. However, even for Jesus, there were times when following God caused tensions with family expectations. And that can be true today, especially for those whose family members don't share their Christian faith. I know one couple from Bangladesh who were disowned by both their sets of parents when they let it be known that they were followers of Jesus Christ. That can be one of the costs of following Jesus. But even if we do face family tensions for being a Christian, it's a real encouragement to be part of God's special family. So let's keep looking out for each other, especially at this time when many are facing great worry and uncertainty. A prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for both, both our families, both our, our human relatives and our Christian family. Keep us prayerful for them. And give us the strength to reflect your love and faithfulness in all our relationships with them. Amen.